Hello and welcome, Lynx here, and today it is the continuation of Maiden's Dissection. That's correct, we are sitting to Act 2. Let's see what's hidden in here. The Conference. And how all the weeks and months fly by like a dandelion in the wind. I took Camille on her offer back on the first day we met, and ever since then I've struggled to tear myself from her orbit. What? Weren't we supposed to be with... Ivy? My every thought, my every dream at night, my, my every walking action. She's there. Camille! My maiden Ivy seemed so distracted with her duties as student council president. Okay, fair enough, I mean, yeah. She has not given me a single look ever since the opening day, and Aster has been so invested with her studies that she has gone so far as to refuse Camille's eagerness to help. What? I suppose I can't really judge them because it has only allowed Camille and I to spend so much of these last several months together. Nice. Without Camille, I would have for sure struggled to pass even the most basic of classes. But more importantly, I would have been so alone without her being by my side. It's also her fault that I took up drawing. After all, art was something I was interested in early, yet I used to see no point in learning a new skill, such a subjective one too. I really learned how to take a leap of faith from her. It's been like a dream that I've never woken up from. And now the conference she has spoken endlessly about is finally here. Professionals from all aspects of botany and medical science have convened at this academy to present the latest discoveries. And Camille is presenting alongside this mysterious idol of hers, the doctor and director of this academy. I can't wait to cheer her on, let her know how proud I am to call her my friend. Friend. I suppose I've never really thought about it, but is she a friend? I've never had a friend before really, or I've never met someone I'd call a friend, someone that would not lie to me. But then again, is friend the right word for Camille? I mean, what do I know about her? What does she know about me? Everyone I've never known has been vile creatures wearing masks for others to see. Am I just fooling myself into thinking there is something special about Camille? No, Camille is special. Maybe. But Camille is a friend. Oh boy. Hmm. Am I fooling myself? There is something special. I mean. That special part might be visible only to you, right? So, there is that. I can't really tell myself. I mean, we barely know her on my own here. Let's go with special, yeah. Let's go with that. Ever since I first saw her, she has... Is it me or is this transition very weird? Yeah, it's very weird, isn't it? It like you click, it shows the entire uh, entire line and then goes into uh, writing it down, sort of. Kind of weird. Anyway, ever since I first saw her, she has been the only thing worth looking at. I can't even stomach the thought of her not knowing that. She deserves everything. But, does she even know how I feel? No, she doesn't. How could she when I haven't even been honest with myself all these months? Friend. She's more than a friend. And she should know about it. Are we going to confess? Holy. The ambience softens to a whisper as if you were sinking. Your stomach grumbles sickly as you wake up from your short sleep. Oh, you bet my sleep once again was short. I don't know why. Lately I'm like three hours. And I'm awake. So annoying. 
I know. Thirty commandments. Ah, oh, my. I zoned out for quite a while there. It's the day of the annual conference. I wonder where my maiden Ivy is. She doesn't seem to be present in this auditorium. But this is the annual conference we're talking about where I thought the student council press should at least attend. Ah, uh, whatever. It's not like we're friends or anything. Aster is here for frontline as always. She's always so focused when I get to see her in class. Must be one influence to her genius. Talk about those two. I really should just ask Amber about Ivy. Come to think of it, I have rarely seen Aster this last year. Last time I saw her, she was with Ivy. Exactly! What a strange occurrence it was. I was just trying to get some medicine from the lockers when I heard them from the classroom. You lay your head down on the auditorium's desk. Hey, Asta! Would you kindly give me a hand? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Here you are. Astra had a different voice, much more confident and steady. Got me thinking if the two girls were closer than I thought. Enter the classroom. Yeah! Intruder! Intruder! Is that how she greets me after not seeing me for the whole school year? What are you doing here? That's my line. Not necessarily, but... I look at the dissection table in the middle of the classroom and notice some cylindrical jars covered in some white cloth. What is that? Reaching for the cloth? No, 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 wait, please! These are for someone special. Please don't look at them. What are they? I then looked at the hysterical ivy and noticed her eyes shooting me a menacing look. I mean, glare. There's just some paint. Esther, there's no need to exaggerate. Okay. Ah, well. Well, then, I suppose you two are lucky I didn't need any paint right now. Ha ha. A moment passes as Esther looks away, nervous as Ivy eyes you. We are really busy right now. I'm sorry. Right. Um, well, I'll just go ahead and leave you to be. I think we can make something very special together. Is she hitting on me? Um, sure, that sounds fun. At the time, I didn't really think about it. Since. Dude, like Rockstar, buzz off. Rockstar Games uh, invited you to whatever, who cares? At the time, I didn't really think about it since Camille was waiting for me. Am I the only one not hyped up at all for new GTA? I don't feel it, to be honest. Looking back on it now, I wonder what Aster meant by that. Was she trying to get closer to me? I've always seen her as distant, but Camille has taught me to think differently. Maybe she's lonely, but she has Ivy, right? Why was Ivy helping her to begin with? Welcome everybody to the 6th Annual Patrical Health Conference brought to you by Oleander Foundation. It's starting. Camille, you can do it. It's about time we get started now. So there has been some great findings this year, but there is something I can say that one has eclipsed all of the others. It must be Camille's. What? One study, study, one study that delves deeply into the true nature of beauty and its contributors are none other than our own students, Camille Lively and Ivy Orum. Ivy, when was she ever involved with Camille's project? What? Perhaps the student council body had to be involved. That must be it, yeah. The study, study, what I, the study comprises. The anatomical intricacies of the human body compared to the flowers we also dearly study. Before you is a detailed diagram model of the human form. Committee's members show the picture of a dissected human with their head slashed. Oh god, well, that image looks so real. I think I'm going to be sick. Get a hold of yourself. This is Camille's work and you're getting queasy of a medical diagram. Hmm. Oh, I 
have a thought. I know, it just made me feel so wrong. I mean, in order to do the study, they need to study that, right? What did that supposed picture was made by them after studying? This section. You stand in the front yard of the academy as the lush rose bushes decorate both sides of the pathway. You gather your strength and rush outside to the academy's garden. The fresh air fills your lungs as your nerves soothe. My mind races. I don't even know what to think right now. I feel scared. But why? I should be proud. Happy even. This is a day to celebrate as Camille shares her discoveries to the world. But still. Your eyes wander around your surroundings and one thing stands out to you. All the colors have disappeared from the gardens as it seems the roses have all lost their ghastly glow. Everything is empty. You take a deep breath. And try to relax. Okay. Let's get back to the contrast. I would hate to miss. Wait a minute. You squint your eyes as you see a person rush over to you. Is that Aster right there? I hope I haven't missed the conference. Aster stands before you and looks dis disheveled with tear scared eyes. I was searching all over for you. Where have you been? Here? Never mind. I need to show you something. Come fast! Asa takes you by the hand and drags you back to the academy's hallways. Where are we going? Talk to me! Hey, where are we going? Asa doesn't say a word. She doesn't even look back at you as you plead for answers. You follow as Asa digs her grip into your wrist until you finally reach... A lab? The very same lab that you stumbled upon Ivy and Aster working together. The very same lab that Ivy took you to on the first day. The one that we actually didn't get to see on the first day in the game at least. But I guess our character did see. <laughs> Aster lets go of your hand and turns to you. You watch as she wipes tears from her face. She can hardly look at you. It's inside. What is it? I... you need to look for yourself. You slowly open the door. You step into the dark lit room. Where are the lights? What is that smell, by the way? <laughs> is that this effect, then? You fumble your hand around the wall, hoping to find the light switch, as the overwhelming stench burns your nose. Now there's something else that smells so... Rancid? Ah, to hell with those lights. Oh, what? Wait, what is this? Your hand covers the side of a metal table until you feel... Then the lights flicker on and... You forgot to be kidding me! Come you! You stand frozen as you witness a macabre display. Come you severed headrest before staring back at you with a horrified expression. Her torso lays behind it with all of her limbs detached and pried open like the very same sick display in the conference. Are you? Oh, oh fuck! She was that picture. Oh god. Ooh. As I rush to your side and grabs you by the wrists again. As I drags you by the wrists, but then you run to Ivy, who holds a jar with a human heart pierced with rose bush thorns. What are you doing here? I do hope you haven't touched anything. As I digs her nice into your skin and drags you out of the lap. You two rush down the academy's corridors as lockers and rooms fly by, but all you can see is Camille's terrified gaze looking back at you. You and Aster return to the front yard of the academy. Wait, no one actually tried to chase us? That's crazy. 
Soon the running becomes too much. Your knees give out and you collapse at the front of the school. What are you doing? We have to get out of here. With pleasure. I can't. I, I, I can't. I, I. She was the world to me. She was the only genuine person I got to know. <laughs> How could anyone do such a thing to her? It was Ivy. She did her Camille. How could she? I'm going to be sick. I don't want to forget about it. <laughs> It'll be okay. I'm here for you. I'll always be here for you. What? Okay, how is any of this going to be okay? She's dead. Dead. Camille was so pure she deserved any of this. What am I going to do now? I love her, I need her, I can breathe. <laughs> pitiful, oh pitiful. That's what you would say right now if you could, just like the flower is so grass pitiful. Why, why would rip away the one we think in this world? After kneels next to you and rests her hands on your shoulders, you feel her warmth as she holds you tightly. I can love you more. Say what? <laughs> 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 Are you serious? What? Camille was a kind soul, but she was untouched by the world's true nature. One unable to properly see how harsh reality is. But you, you on the other hand can see just how painful life truly is. What is going on? <laughs> One person in my years of research has exhibited such a deep, piercing agony in their hearts. Yeah. Wait, what? Except for you. Oh, boy. And this has only stained your person further, creating quite the alluring garage of pain. Mm. And just like the aura of the iris flower Camille spoke endlessly about, I can't seem to take my eyes off you. Uh oh. Every day you'd pass me by in the halls, watching the defenseless flower Camille was, while I'd witness your sc soul screaming anguish. <laughs> That's a good laughter, by the way. Oh, just how beautiful you were. Oh, I love you so. Uh oh. Love is the pain of others. Yes, you heard me. <laughs> That's a good laughter. What the hell? If someone acts like that, act even more like them. <laughs> if they're crazy, go crazy even more. Anyway. Aster smiles with a sinister grin as she laughs maniacally. She draws out a pair of dissection scissors. Oh, come on. Would you like to feel as I do? We got to work you step back. Where are you going? Running away again? Why? Aren't you tired of all the running? The life's ugliness is exhausting. What if it weren't for all the ugliness? I would have never seen you in all this beautiful pain. If it were me, I'm pretty confident I would be able to outrun her, but yeah. Get the hell away from me! Aster raises her scissors and lunges at you. You stumble backwards and fall into the rose bushes. Oh, come on! The thorns stick into your skin as Astra approaches. She looms over you with her scissors shining in the red sunlight. Oh boy. Oh no! Oh, I don't even need to reach. I've heard it. The sword slides into your thigh and you scream in pain. Your hand lands on a pair of gardener shears. Your trembling grip tightens on their handle. Ooh. It's counterattack time! You thrust the rusty shears at as Aster, Aster lunges at you. The sound of blood gushing and chopping echo over black. Did I succeed or fail? Did I succeed or fail? And then she was dead. Who was that? Me or Aster? This was important. You can't cut us off like that! 
Ah! The ghastly auditorium is all deserted. Ivy Suhuet appears from the shadows. Oh, bye. I got late for the conference. It's too bad now. Ivy's voice fills up the silence as she seems to be speaking uh, to an imaginary audience. I mean, e yeah. Thinking back on the events that transpired, I've asked myself what I would have done differently. I mean, you could have acted as a maiden as you were supposed to, I guess. Maybe, yeah, or I don't know. And honestly, don't tell me you will say I would change nothing. I freaking knew. There is no way to save what is already lost from the beginning. What's done is done. Mm. In our reality, beauty is perceived as a lie, a crude, sick joke that is played upon its players. And it is. Beauty is just a trite trap, bringing you closer to your own fragility. Okay. Was it of any help to condemn the lives of the world? Life's bleak veil haunted you, which pushed you into the life's biggest trap. Beauty! All those hours that you spent with Camille, fantasizing about the happy life you two could have had, it weakened you, corrupted you. Because that is what beauty does. It corrupts. Interesting, interesting. And it in fact that you dearly so much so forgot to see all the signs flashing before you. The gardener fell in love with the flower and soon died, just like how an artist dies with their art. Death by beauty. Perhaps if the artist hadn't fantasized about beauty that could only survive within a dream, they would have seen that Aster was the doctor of this academy. What? She took a liking to Camille early on. They lured her in by warning her studies and promised that they could meet their idol if she had just tried harder. Then she waited for that one person to come and make the whole dissection of the flower more impactful, more agonizing. And that person was you. No! So I guess uh, in the end this not survive. I remember I told myself how much I would have loved for you to not end up on that path because I felt a genuine connection to you. There's really no reason for me to lie now as you lay on the table before me. Death. But for what it's worth, I liked you dearly. You were one of the only that saw the actual ugliness of the world. I mean, so, I'm sorry, what supposed connection? You literally only interacted with me on the first day. Which was not the greatest of interactions, but still... What for? You still grip the hope that Camille still you. As if that wasn't as much of a lie as your surroundings. Camille never had the protection. To ask for yes indeed she was the flower with beautiful thorns. Therefore it would have been beautiful for me to try and spare her inevitable fate. If there was no beauty in our world, how easy would it be for all of us to live and not die an artist's death? Shall I employ a prayer for you and the others? No. That is only comfort for the mind. Why would I beg for forgiveness in such a miserable way? The world does not even deserve those poor, pitiful girls. But, to be honest, I wouldn't call your death pitiful at all. What do you mean? 
When I first laid my eyes on you, it was like looking in a mirror, but they changed so quickly. I suppose seeing that natural beauty does that. We all try to have that beauty for ourselves, but it is impossible to protect it. Hmm. It seems only I know that. Hmm. So rest now in that cold, empty void that we all stem from. This ugly world never deserved your beauty anyway. Hmm. Act 3 has been unlocked and is available in the title screen. Well, that's nice to know. We will jump into Act 3, of course, in the next episode. Yes. It has... I'm gonna sneeze in a second. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, it has already been decided yesterday that we are playing this in three separate sections. So we are going to do it exactly like that. Even for this one was a little shorter. But it's fine. It is absolutely fine. Definitely a lot happened over here. Definitely a lot happened. Um, definitely a bit of unexpected things as well, to be honest. Anywho, uh, with that being said, let's end it here. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, you know, the usual, consider liking. And if you're new around, subscribe if you like games like this. Always appreciated. And hopefully I'll see you tomorrow as well. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.